today I'm headed out. We're going to pick up Ryan Murray. who is the state CISO, Chief Information Security Officer, here in the state of Arizona. He is just doing incredible and fantastic work to protect our community. Let's invite Ryan and talk a little bit about the future and cybersecurity here in Arizona. Why, welcome, Ryan. Shall we go for a ride? Absolutely. Let's, Let's go. go. So you are state of Arizona CISO. I am. A CISO is a Chief Information Security Officer. We, we're, Correct. That's, yeah, that's we, our, we're both part of that yeah, club. Yeah. <laughs> what is this club that we're part of and what are you seeing both from a state perspective and just in general um, in the CISO role? Yeah, for sure. So we focus on understanding the cyber threats that are out there and doing the best that we possibly can to provide direction not only to our own teams but to all of the other organizations that we're required to support how to best protect uh, all of the critical services that we provide to to the citizens of Arizona. You've, you've got a lot of really interesting projects that I think give you an opportunity to kind of see across the state. Yeah, I'll, I'll say, especially here in Arizona, we're trying to better understand the threats to the entire state as a whole, as opposed to just saying, well, we're supporting or protecting this specific piece of technology or this database that lives here. We've been deploying what we called our cyber readiness program. A combination of some state general fund dollars and some federal programs, uh, we're trying to provide cybersecurity protections to every local entity across the state. Yeah, we are so vastly attacked. Um, Microsoft has this really nice publicly available threat watch and you know, they'll show you in the last 30 days and 80% of the attacks will be in education. And I understand, you know, the school districts, we have an incredible, all the way to, to higher ed, got the whole mix of all the kinds of data yeah. Um, yeah. And, and data that is, you know, particularly interesting data to a variety of different kinds of threat actors. Yeah. So it is a really big challenge. Well, and it's super unfortunate because we're starting to see those attacks take sort of a different shape where not only are they breaking into these environments, locking them up with ransomware, extorting the organization, saying we're going to leak this information out publicly. But this is sensitive information about, right. you know, student health care records, mental health capabilities. Uh, we're seeing them do this sort of third order extortion where they're threatening to leak uh, mental health reports and performance improvement plans on students to say, look, we're going to blast this out to your community, to your friends and family, and let them know how badly you're struggling if you don't convince these organizations to pay these ransoms. It's a sort of continuous cat and mouse game of yeah. the bad guys are getting more and more creative, so we have to continue to be more and more creative. You seen much in terms of generative AI and the bad guys actually leveraging? So I'll say there's a couple of things that we're tracking right now, specifically when it comes to phishing campaigns, threat actors, specifically those in non-English speaking countries. It's really easy for them to get access to generative AI and large language learning models and say, write me a phishing campaign for a native English speaker with this specific topic or this specific sector. And now we're not seeing those typos, we're not seeing the bad grammar. Yeah. From a university perspective, a lot of what we aspire to is helping to build that next gen workforce, really thinking about what our leaders need to look like. So I'd love your reflections on what are the kinds of things that we would want to consider both in developing that, creating experiences. We're looking at, what is it, almost 600,000 cyber vacancies across the nation now, yeah. and how do we identify cybersecurity talent? How do we place people in the positions that they need to be in? We're seeing these numbers like this, right? 600,000 vacancies. The majority of those are mid to senior level positions. So we're trying to get creative about where do we get better experiential learning, right? How do we partner with the universities to get hands-on experience so when they do graduate, they've got that, that under their belt and we can start just placing them where they need to go. I'm curious, what, what do you think the nature of these jobs are? Yeah, I, I would say from my own experience and what we've talked to members of the community is the majority of them, like I said, are mid to senior level positions. We're looking for, you know, tier three SOC analysts. We're looking for engineers that can build the tools. Uh, we're looking for uh, system administrators that can securely deploy and develop the technologies. And we're looking for developers, right? Yeah. People that yeah. can securely write these applications. And it's unfortunate that uh, uh, we just heard a statistic at a conference I attended uh, last week that uh, there are no uh, developer-focused um, 
uh, university programs that have a required cybersecurity curricula. Huh. So we're still pushing developers out the door, learning how to code, being brilliant developers, but not focused on how they do that securely. We're not embedding security by design exactly. into the design work. Yeah. So if you had to come up with like four things that every, every CISO wants you to know, what would those be? <laughs> so uh, be able to identify phishing email. And like I said, I know this is getting harder and harder as our threat actors get more creative. But still, that's one of the fundamental ways that organizations are getting compromised is through phishing. The next one is use multi-factor authentication, right? Yeah. We're seeing that password spray attacks are happening. We're seeing continuously compromised credentials being posted on the dark web. And it's super easy to be able to just block those things by saying we've got this multi-factor authentication code. Okay, so recognize the fish, um, say yes to multi-factor. Yeah. Being able to better identify where those vulnerabilities mm -hmm. exist in your environment and then addressing them and patching them in a timely fashion. Even though multi-factor is definitely yeah. the way to go, having a strong complex password is still critical. What we have been doing is sort of individually with organizations, as anyone who does report a phishing message, we've yeah. been giving them Swedish fish ah, or cute. goldfish crackers. <laughs> uh, and, you know, just going out there and celebrating that, that positive reinforcement yeah. of, hey, you identified a phishing email, you're helping to make the state more secure. Brian, this has been so much fun. Yeah, for me as well. Thank you so much. Oh, I absolutely. It. Absolutely. I learned a lot today. Me too. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. And thank you, Waymo. Thank you, Waymo. <laughs>